this example as um, uh, sort of a neat, unique of uh, the examples we've done so far in that it includes um, uh, links of lossless transmission lines, but also includes a lumped impedance of 50 ohm uh, uh, series uh, resistor here. We can kind of think of this as a cascaded uh, set of three different two port devices. The first two port device being a quarter wavelength trans uh, transmission line. Uh, the second two port device being the series resistor. And then again, a third two port device, which is again, the uh, uh, length of transmission line lambda over four. Notice the transmission lines connecting port one and port two are both the same in this case, uh, 50 ohms. So let's go through and try to find the full scattering matrix for this two port device. Here's port one. Here's port two. Again, we have two transmission line links and a series resistor uh, in between those two. So there's a number of ways of uh, finding the solutions here. We could uh, simply um, use the telegrapher equations on both uh, transmission lines on either side of that 50 ohm resistor and then apply boundary conditions to find the wave amplitudes and then um, uh, carefully apply the uh, determine the incident scatter waves at uh, the port planes where they are defined. Uh, we could go through and use the accordion. We could come up with uh, uh, equivalent circuits. Of course, uh, the length of transmission lines in those uh, in the two port device themselves were 50, um, uh, quarter wavelength. So those were special cases and we could go through and and pretty quickly go through and come up with an equivalent circuit it and then re-expand it out, move the solutions back to the other end and finally find the uh, uh, voltages required to determine the scattering parameters. Uh, those would all work fine. Uh, we could put a match source and a match load uh, on, um, on either side of the circuit and then go through and apply boundary conditions or the equivalent circuit there. But one of the tools in our toolbox for circuit analysis that we have yet to apply when it comes to evaluating scattering matrix is that of an even odd mode analysis. And in this case, uh, we can apply that tool. Of course, we can only apply it when we have a circuit that exhibits bilateral symmetry. Note this circuit does um, exhibit bilateral symmetry. It's more easier seen if we break the 50 ohm resistor into uh, two 25 ohm resistors in series, and then we can draw a line that uh, bisect those. And we can see that there's a plane of bilateral symmetry. We reflect across this plane and we end up with the same circuit. We have a 50 ohm transmission line connected to port one, but we also have one connected to port two. So not only is the circuit itself symmetric, but the uh, transmission lines we connect to each port are symmetric as well. And both those things have to be true for us to apply odd, of e odd even mode analysis. So what do we do after we recognize that um, the circuit has a uh, plane of bilateral symmetry? Uh, we could go through and apply the telegrapher equations on either side of the transmission line and then have a single incident wave amplitude on port one and write that as the sum uh, in terms of its even mode incident waves, uh, basically V0 plus over two uh, plus V0 plus over two. Uh, and then go to their side and the incident wave over here uh, is zero, of course, there's no incident wave, but we could write that as uh, uh, some of its uh, odd and even values. In other words, uh, minus V0 plus over two, I'm sorry, try again, V0 plus over two minus V0 plus over two, of course, that's equal to zero. So we could write the incident waves in terms of the sum of the two even modes and then the difference or the I guess, the addition of the odd and even mode uh, voltage source to make it zero. But instead, what we're gonna do is apply a matched source on one side and a matched load on the other. So, um, you know, we're doing this uh, analysis and it looks like we've kind of messed up our symmetry by applying the source here and here. What we're going to do is rewrite this in terms of the even mode and odd mode sources. This is the sum of the two even mode sources, and this is the um, sum of the even mode and the odd mode source uh, uh, over here. Um, uh, I'm sorry, let's try again. The, it's the even mode plus the odd mode, and this is the even mode minus the odd mode, rather, over here. Um, the um, uh, how do we do that? Well, we recognize that we have a 50 ohm or Z0 resistor here, a 50 ohm resistor over here as well. The difference between this side and this side is we have a 
ideal voltage source VG here and we have no such voltage source here. Or do we? Because we can think of this Z0 as being in series with, of course, a short circuit here. And a short circuit is a voltage source whose value is equal to 0. And so we're going to say I have a voltage source here, Vg, in series with Z0. Z0 and then I have a voltage source 0 in series with Z0. Again, just a short circuit there. <clears throat> and from that, we can determine the even and odd mode voltages and rewrite the circuit in terms of them. Stop and take a second to look at this circuit. It's very important that you see this. So on the right side, or left side over here, rather we have a match source. Uh, resistance, uh, source resistance of Z0, 50 ohms. And then we've taken our ideal voltage source of VG and we divided it into two pieces, VG over 2 plus VG over 2. So the um, even and odd mode voltage sources here are VG over 2. And we add them together to come up with the total um, voltage source of VG. Over here on the right, again, we have a resistance C0. And now we've kind of moved it up here to emphasize the symmetry with the left side. That Z0 is in series with the short circuit, which simply then leaves a passive load Z0 at the at port 2, the, the match load terminating port 2. But we're going to go and rewrite this short circuit now as the um, uh, even mode voltage minus the odd mode voltage, Vg over 2 minus Vg over 2. And of course, those two voltage sources in series, since this is plus and that's minus, turn out to have a value of zero. So this is just a fancy way of describing a short circuit, Vg over 2 in series with a minus Vg over 2. Now we can go through and apply our even and odd mode analysis of our circuit. Again, notice what we have, a match circuit over here, a match load over here, because these are effectively zero. But we split them up in a way which would allow us to apply superposition for even and odd modes. First, we're going to uh, do the even mode analysis. We're going to turn off the odd mode sources. So we turn off VG over 2, and by turning off, we say we set it to 0. It makes it a short circuit. And we turn off the odd mode source over here, minus VG over 2, and again, makes that a short circuit. We're left with simply the even mode source on either side. And so now we have an even symmetry. Plus VG over 2 here, plus VG over 2 here. Notice we got the uh, source impedance C0 on either side. Now we can see the bilateral symmetry. And since we have an even symmetry, the plane of bilateral symmetry becomes a virtual open. No current can flow across that plane. Because of that, we can take our scissors and just slice this circuit right in half. It won't affect every, anything because we didn't have a current flowing uh, across this boundary anyway. And so we have two half circuits that we can analyze to determine the even mode voltage of port 1 and the uh, should be the even mode voltage rather at port 2. And those two things are going to be equal to each other. Again, that should be even mode at port 2 they'll be equal. Because they're equal, you only need to analyze one side. And so let's choose this half circuit to analyze. So if we look carefully here at this circuit, uh, this half circuit, uh, what we really have is a 25 ohm resistors in, resistor in series with an infinite uh, ohm resistor or infinite impedance. Uh, we have an open circuit in series with the 25 ohm resistor, and of course that results in impedance that has a magnitude of infinity. So uh, open circuit in, in series with the 25 ohm resistor is the same as an open circuit. So we have a quarter wavelength of transmission line that's terminated in an open circuit. That's one of our special cases. We can replace this quarter wave, half wave, uh, quarter wavelength transmission line terminated in a uh, open circuit with its an equivalent circuit, its input impedance looking into here. And of course, we know what that input, input impedance should be. Because a quarter wavelength of transmission line that's terminated in an open circuit, that transmission line transforms that open circuit of input impedance into an input with an impedance of zero. It transforms the open circuit into a short circuit. And so now this becomes our equivalent circuit that we have. The input impedance of the structure is a impedance of zero, a short circuit there. And of course, by definition, a short circuit has a voltage across it equal to zero. 
So our even mode voltage for at port one turns out to be zero volts, easily determined. We also know, of course, that the uh, even mode voltage at port two is equal to the even mode voltage at port one, otherwise it wouldn't be an even mode, and therefore the even mode voltage at port two is also equal to zero. So let's look at the other half circuit, or the other side, when we do an odd mode analysis. So we um, uh, turn off the even mode voltage sources and we turn on the odd mode sources and we do an analysis there. And what we're looking for in this case is the odd mode voltage at port one. And of course, then we know that the odd mode voltage at port two will be the opposite of this answer because on the other side of half circuit, we have a minus VG over two. So we look at this circuit, and because the uh, uh, we're doing odd mode, we have a situation where the plane becomes a um, uh, the the uh, plane of reflection symmetry rather becomes a virtual short. It connects uh, this terminal down to this terminal here with with a short circuit. I said virtual ground, but I really should have said virtual short for this particular circuit here. And so what we have is simply a 25 ohm resistor that is terminating this quarter wave length transmission line. All right, everybody see that that loop around there, the total resistance is equal to 25 ohms. Then we can do a transform, a, 20, a, term, a transmission line terminated in 25 ohm resistor. That transmission line is a quarter wavelength. Of course, then we do the transform and we find its input impedance will be equal to 100. And that's easily determined. If 25, of course, is half of Z0, then the input impedance will be twice that of Z0 or 100 ohms. So the input impedance of port one is now 100 ohms from that quarter wave transformer, transform the 25 ohms into 100 ohms. And we have a very simple equivalent circuit now where we go through and find the voltage, use voltage division. Again, be careful here, we're not using VG as our source. This is VG over two, the odd mode voltage um, that is the voltage in this analysis. And when we do that analysis, we get VG over three. Again, a lot of times students will leave off the two there and that's a mistake. <clears throat> now. That is the odd mode voltage at port one. The odd mode voltage at port two is the opposite of that. So we take this answer and multiply by minus one, and we get this answer for the odd mode voltage at port two. So now we go through and find the port voltages by adding the even mode and odd mode solutions. Port one, the voltage V1 is the even mode and odd mode voltage, which turns out to be the source voltage VG divided by three. Uh, for port two, we add the even and odd mode voltages at port two. Remember, the odd mode voltage at port two is the opposite of the odd mode voltage at port one. So instead of getting zero plus VG over three, we get zero minus VG over three. That's a minus VG over three, and that becomes the result for port two. So in this case, the voltages are equal but opposite, and that occurred because the even mode voltages uh, were both equal to zero. So we used even an odd mode analysis to quickly determine the port voltages V1 and V2. And it was pretty straightforward because we ended up with two equivalent circuits that were very simple to analyze. One was simply a short circuit and the other one was a voltage division. And that gave us the total voltage without ever having to worry about telegrapher equation solutions, um, without having to worry about wave amplitudes. Uh, because we had the special case of a lambda over four transmission line, we could come up with the equivalent circuit very quickly. And we're analyzing now two single port circuits as opposed to one big uh, double port circuit, uh, two port circuit. So we've done the heavy lifting now to find the total voltages at port one and port two. Now we need to determine the scattering parameters and the procedure is exactly the same as we've done it before. The fact that it's odd even now has uh, no longer has any importance to us. As always, the incident wave on port one, because we have a match source on port one, is VG over two. The scatter wave at port one is the difference between the total voltage and the incident wave. We determine the total voltage to be VG over three, and we subtract now the incident wave of VG over two, and we get minus VG over six. On port two, of course, there is no incident wave, so the total voltage at port two is simply the scattered wave voltage at port two. 
And we've determined the total voltage at port 2. It's minus VG over 3. And that then is the scattered voltage at port 2. So to determine the scattering parameters, we could go through and formally determine the uh, normalized wave amplitude A and B for each of them and then take the ratio. Or we could put their equations into the uh, uh, value of, um, of uh, scattering parameters there and we get this result. In this case, since the tra uh, transmission line characters competes on each port is the same, 50 ohms, these square roots uh, cancel out. But again, I like to write them in there and then if they cancel out, which they frequently do, but allow you to do that to cancel out as opposed to leaving them off and only putting them in when necessary. Uh, uh, again, students oftentimes forget uh, when that is necessary. So I like the more general case that simplifies down frequently as it does here. Do the evaluation, we get S11 is equal to minus one-third, S21 is equal to minus two-thirds. One of the things we can look here is if we take then the magnitude of this first column, um, <clears throat> Uh, take the magnitude squared of S11, add it to the magnitude squared of S21, uh, that value is less than 1. Of course, if the matrix were to be unitary, it must be equal to 1. Have we made a mistake here? Is there something wrong? It, in other cases, when we did this evaluation, we wanted the uh, magnitude of those that uh, uh, column vectors, those column vectors to be equal to 1. Well, that was a case where the device was lossless. If the device is lossless, then yes, we need a unitary matrix for the scattering matrix. But this circuit clearly is not lossless. This circuit has a 50 ohm resistor in it, that series resistor right there in the middle of the circuit. So we have a device that can absorb energy and will absorb energy. And therefore, this circuit is not a lossless circuit. This circuit is a lossy circuit. And because it's lossy by conservation of energy, the magnitude now of at least one of these columns must be less than one. And there it is right here. It's less than one. Now, if magnitude greater than one, that would imply that it was an active device, and clearly it's not. These are made of passive elements, a resistor, and two links of transmission lines. So if we got a magnitude greater than one, <clears throat> um, we knew we did something wrong. Um, even if we got a magnitude equal to one here, that would be okay probably as long as there was uh, uh, one of the columns uh, had a value less than one, but in this case the first column was less than one. What about the um, what about the second column um, for uh, of the scattering matrix for S22 and S12? Uh, we could go through and do the analysis, but really it'd be the same analysis as we did before. We put the match source on the other side of our circuit, and the only difference between the circuits we'd analyze on one case would be they would be just sort of flipped over, but otherwise they'd be the same uh, circuit. So presumably we'd come up with the same answer. Instead of recalculating them, let's just go ahead and use symmetry, the symmetry of the circuit, to uh, determine their answers. Because of symmetry, um, because it has D1 symmetry, this two-port device is D1 symmetry, we conclude that S22 and S11 are equal to each other, and therefore S22 is also equal to minus one-third. Also because of symmetry, D1 symmetry, we can conclude that S12 and S21 are equal to each other uh, at a value of minus two-third. If that wasn't enough justification, we would find that these two things must be equal to each other because of reciprocity. So this, for two-port device, uh, S12 and S21 are always going to be equal to each other, at least for the simple elements that uh, circuit elements that we use because of reciprocity. Sometimes they also must be equal to each other, a, a, double, a double constraint um, because of symmetry. This case, S11 equal to S22, is generally not the case for a two-port device unless it has a plane of bilateral symmetry, as the circuit does in this case. And when a plane has a uh, a circuit at two-port device has a plane of bilateral symmetry. It is often easier to determine these values by applying odd, even-mode analysis.